because I know what happened. I needed me to know, figure it out what happened. If you don't have me, you don't know what happened. Looking I just cool. know that some guy come here. Yeah. And he f up some guy. What I happened then? Tell me what happened. This city is mine. I'm not. Gonna this city is yours, is it? Yeah, this city is mine. The first rule of thumb in every criminal activity is to evade capture at all costs. Most criminals tend to keep a low profile, so it stands out when a criminal not only returns to his scene of crime, but taunts the police, proudly bragging that he was the key to solving the case. After all, providing such information is like leading the police right to you. But that's exactly what Merrick Hecko did. This is a tale of obsession, jealousy, and hatred. Welcome to Crime City. This is the story of Merrick Hecko, the murderer who got drunk and confessed to cops at the crime scene. In the early hours of July 25th, 2022, cops were called to a brutal crime scene. And as they were working to assess the situation, a man walked up to one of the guarding officers with a bottle of brandy in his hand. The man appeared drunk and was ranting about many things, but amid his sometimes incoherent rants, he said something that caught the officer's attention. He said he knew someone had attacked a man in the house. The officer was shocked. They had just been called to the crime scene and no one knew the details of what had gone on in the house, yet. As much as the detail was suspicious to the officer, she couldn't rule out that this could be the rantings of a drunk. When the man wouldn't leave the scene and kept insisting that they needed him to solve the case, the officers at the scene placed him under arrest for drunk and disorderly conduct and went back to their investigation. You're gonna think about me, but it's not gonna be me because there's no proof. Marek Heko was a 23-year-old Slovakian citizen who moved to the United Kingdom in 2019. He wanted a fresh start and was captivated by the city of Chelmsford, where he settled. It was about 30 miles northeast of London. While its proximity to London was promising, it was its sprawling countryside and happy people that truly held Merrick's heart. Merrick wanted to be a chef. He knew it wasn't going to be easy to start his career in a new place, but he was willing to put in the hours until he could live his dream of sharing delicious cuisine from his hometown with the world. He started as a waiter in two different restaurants, and with time, Merrick got employed as a chef. Finally, he could do what he had always wanted to do. There seemed to be no stopping him now, or so he thought. By 2021, Merrick was doing well in Chelmsford. He had a secure job with a stable income and was building a bright future for himself. His personal life also wasn't lacking. Merrick had met a girl named Stephanie Bream. She worked at a local bar in Chelmsford. Merrick was completely in love with Stephanie. He loved spending time with her and always wanted to be around her. Everything seemed to be going well at first, but at some point, Merrick and Stephanie's journey took a very dark turn. That point came when Stephanie started noticing something off about Merrick. He would lie to her about his whereabouts, and when she confronted him with it, he spun more lies. At first, Stephanie thought he was cheating. She would soon find out something worse. Merrick was a junkie. She confronted him about it, but he denied it. Even though Merrick kept denying it, Stephanie couldn't shake the feeling that he was using substances. Eventually, the signs were too hard to ignore. Merrick was constantly high, and Stephanie had had enough of his lies and deceit. By April 2022, Stephanie had ended things with Merrick, telling him she couldn't be with a junkie. At first, Merrick seemed to accept the breakup, but as time went on, he seemed to struggle with letting Stephanie go. He would call her repeatedly, sending her long texts begging her to give him a second chance. The more Stephanie turned him down, the more erratic Merrick became. He would randomly turn up at her house or work, begging her to take him back. And when none of that was working, Merrick lied to her that he had colon cancer, hoping it would bring her back to him. That plan failed, but that didn't stop Merrick. He continued to bombard Stephanie with messages, and no matter how many times she turned him away, Merrick didn't seem to understand Stephanie would never take him back. When begging Stephanie didn't work, Merrick graduated to stalking her. He would obsess over her Facebook page, confident the reason Stephanie wasn't taking him back was because there was someone else in her life. He would stalk posts she liked and commented on, and people she friended. He would scrutinize every little interaction she had on Facebook. Merrick had no idea how right he was about Stephanie, and when he found out, it would set in motion horrific events that cost a wife her husband and two children their father. Stephanie was seeing someone new. She had started a relationship with a man named Adrian Ellenford a little while after ending things with Merrick. Adrian was a 44-year-old man who lived in Chelmsford. People who knew him described him as a hardworking man who cared a great deal about his family and was always willing to lend a helping hand to anyone who needed it. He had two kids, boys, aged 10 and 12. 
Adrian was a model resident of Chelmsford, volunteering at the local Boy Scout group whenever he had the time. But as committed of a husband and father as he was, Adrian was not perfect. He had a terrible secret he was hiding from his family, a secret they wouldn't find out until it was too late. Although he had a wife whom he had been with for 17 years, Adrian also had a mistress. He had been secretly sneaking around with Stephanie Bream for a while now. Although Stephanie and Adrian enjoyed spending time with each other, they were both desperate to keep things hush-hush. So when Merrick turned up at Stephanie's house at the same time Adrian was supposed to show up, Stephanie got a little nervous. Merrick went to Stephanie's house under the pretense that he was there to pick up some things he had left behind when they were still together. Stephanie quickly went through the house to get Merrick's things and gave them to him expecting him to leave afterward. Except Merrick wasn't budging. He stood outside the door for a good 40 minutes, begging her to take him back. As he was declaring his undying love for Stephanie, Adrian showed up. Adrian parked his car and went into the house, completely ignoring Merrick. But Merrick noticed him and asked Stephanie who he was. Stephanie refused to answer Merrick's question and asked him to leave. Merrick had a sneaking suspicion the man in the house was there to see Stephanie. But because Stephanie lived with her mom, he couldn't be sure the man wasn't there to see her mom. So he left things alone, for the moment. Merrick eventually got tired of begging Stephanie and left her house, but he couldn't shake off the feeling that he had lost Stephanie to the man in the house. On July 24th, 2022, Stephanie, Adrian, and Stephanie's mom stepped out for a bit of fun. They visited the local pub for some drinks, then headed back home to hang out. After hanging out for some time, Stephanie and Adrian went to bed around 1 a.m. Stephanie's bedroom was located on the first floor of the house, while her mom's bedroom was on the ground floor. Stephanie probably fell asleep at around 2.43 a.m., as cell phone records show that was the last time she checked her phone. Around 4.30 a.m., Stephanie woke up to the sounds of the sheets rustling. She opened her eyes and saw Adrian trying to get out of bed. What he said was both shocking and confusing to the still groggy Stephanie. Someone has been in here, Adrian calmly whispered. Stephanie asked what he meant, and he once again told her he thought someone had just been in the room. As he was making his way to her side of the bed, Adrian collapsed face first on the floor. Stephanie was suddenly wide awake. She screamed at Adrian to get up, but there was no response. She rushed to his side to figure out what happened to him when she saw some blood on him. Suddenly, what Adrian had been trying to whisper made sense. Stephanie screamed for her mom and immediately started dialing 999. Her mom rushed in to help as Stephanie explained the bizarre situation to the police. Stephanie tried her best to describe what happened to the police on the phone, but as she was still confused, she couldn't provide them with enough details. The police were on their way. Stephanie hung up the phone, still shocked and confused. But as she clutched Adrian's now limp body tightly in her arms, the pieces were beginning to come together in her head. Adrian had been viciously attacked. He had been stabbed twice each blow so vicious that the blade struck a bone in Adrian's chest and the handle broke off. Stephanie became hysterical, screaming and shouting. She eventually had to be led from the room before she quieted down. By the time emergency services got to Stephanie's house, Adrian was dead. The police immediately cordoned off the crime scene to collect evidence. A few things were immediately obvious. There had been no sign of forced entry and the front door was left wide open. Stephanie told the police she was in the habit of leaving her sliding door slightly open to let some breeze in during the summer heat. The police surmised that the killer had come in through the sliding door and left through the front door. Upon further search through the house, the police found a knife handle at the bottom of the stairs and an empty wine bottle on the side of the house. This case was curious. Who would come in the middle of the night to stab one person in a house that had three people in it, not steal anything, and why? But the police wouldn't be left wondering for long. They worked well into the morning, and as daybreak came, so did an unexpected visitor, bearing a harrowing confession. At around 7.30 a.m., Merrick Hecko sauntered onto the crime scene, a bottle of brandy in hand, and a confession on his lips. Who are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a I can help her. What's going on? Uniform one night? Yeah, I can help her. What's going on? Yeah? No, I know what happened. I know the people they involved, so. Go again. Yeah. But need to dig deep, you know? Thank you. What's your name? I'm not gonna tell you my name. I don't give a f Because I know what happened. And you need me to know, figure it out what happened. If you don't have me, you don't know what 
happened? Merrick continued to taunt the officer. I just thought that some guy come here. Yeah. And he f up some guy. I don't know what, what happened. Right. I don't know what happened. He just got f up. You're gonna think about me, but it's not gonna be me because there's no proof. So, so you think something's happened to a male in this address? No, I know what happened. What I happened then? Everything. Tell I me what happened. This city is mine. I'm not gonna this say city is yours, is it? Yeah, this city is mine. At around 7.40 a.m. on July 25th, 2022, the police placed Merrick Hecko under arrest. In the van, please. Uh, uh, You've been arrested, okay? We're trying I've to, been arrested, yes. We're trying, we're trying, to, we're trying not, okay, we're trying trying not to manhandle you, but we need you to get in the van. At first, for drunk and disorderly conduct, but before the end of the day, Merrick had been charged with the murder of Adrian Ellingford. Merrick Hecko was charged to court, and in February 2023, his trial began. During his trial, the state tried to prove their case. They explained Merrick's obsession with Stephanie to the jury. They said he couldn't move on after the breakup and resulted to stalking her. They further explained that after realizing she had moved on from him, Merrick couldn't take it, so he lashed out, killing Adrian Ellingford. The prosecutors presented evidence to support their case. They showed the jury CCT footage of July 25th, 2022. There Merrick was at 3.37 a.m., purchasing two bottles of red wine from a store on Rainsford Road in Chelmsford. The CCTV also shows him walking in the direction of Nelson Grove, where Stephanie and her mom lived. At 4.45 a.m., right after the vicious attack on Adrian, the CCTV captured Merrick again, walking away from Stephanie's home. But this time, there was only one bottle of wine in his hands. The prosecutors claimed Merrick went to Stephanie's home, drank one bottle of wine on the side of her house, and then left it there. They knew this because his DNA had been found on the bottle. Prosecutors also claimed that after Merrick drank the bottle of wine, he made his way into the house through the open sliding door, and once he saw Adrian in bed with Stephanie, he lost his mind and viciously attacked him. He stabbed him twice in the back before running out of the house through the front door, dropping the handle of the knife at the bottom of the stairs. His DNA was also found on the knife handle. Merrick denied the prosecutor's claims. He insisted his DNA was only on the bottle of wine and the knife handle because he had been in the house several times and his DNA was transferred to the items. He also claimed he returned to the scene because he had heard what happened on the news and wanted to help. But Merrick was forgetting one thing. By the time he arrived on the scene, no information had been released to the public. So it was impossible that he would have heard anything on the news. The jig was up. After deliberating for less than a day, the jury at the Chelmsford Crown Court found Merrick Hecko guilty of the murder of Adrian Ellingford. He was sentenced to life in prison with eligibility for parole after a minimum of 26 years served. Stephanie was relieved justice had been served, and so was Adrian's wife. She read out a heartbreaking impact statement before sentencing. She said, Adrian was my amazing husband of 17 years, as well as being my husband. He was a loving son, a caring brother, a friend to many, and most importantly, a truly brilliant father to our boys. They will not have Adrian with them through the milestones in their lives. He will never be able to teach them to drive, buy them their first drink, or celebrate their academic achievements. He will never see them grow into young men who will have partners and families of their own. No one will ever be able to replace their dad. Adrian, you will always be missed by us as your family, and you will always hold a special place in our hearts. We miss you every day and love you forever. Hey, thanks for watching. What do you think about this case? Did Merrick's drug use play a role in why he murdered Adrian? Leave us a comment and remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.